Jared Poland. Fronos Photo. Dot com here with a 30 for 30 Lightroom head-to-head -head edition where I have Steven. Steven, how's it going? It's going good. All right. It's brought to you by the fine people over at Adobe. And if you want to follow all the 30 for 30 videos, head over to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. And if you haven't downloaded a free trial of Lightroom, well, go ahead and do that. So now, Steven, I think it's time to get editing. Let's see this raw file and tree. I almost said trees, but it's actually a tree. All right, here we go. Get away from me, history thingy me bobber. Wow, there's a lot. You could crop this, you could dehaze it, you could you could boomify it. There's so many different ways that you could go with this. Let's see if we start with this. Oh my God, there's the moon. There's a couple of. All right, let's let's go a couple of different ways. I'm gonna start with this because this is, seems to be the direction I went with the first take of it. Boom. Oh, oh, that's sweet. Super sweet. There, we go with the sky. Let's look into the sky. See what we have around here. We have the moon. Looks like we have a piece of uh, sensor dust issue right there. Gonna make this smaller. Goodbye sensor dust. Sometimes you wanna make sure that the sensor dust isn't actually on your monitor because your monitor may be dirty, which is kind of what mine is right now. Um, there's probably cropping that we could do to this, but I love the colors. I like this a lot. It just seems like we're a little far away from this tree. Let's see what we can do with a crop without losing the moon though. We don't want to lose the moon. We could throw it off to the side or we could just leave it right in the middle. I think I'm gonna go a couple different ways with this. All right, let's see. Just making sure the tree is lined up. Even, boom, we have that. The moon is there, the rolling, Whatever those things are called, it's called fog. All right. All right, here we go. I could hold the shift key to make that straight. Let's see. We've got this. Well, we lost the moon a little bit. I'm just gonna go back to that. I wanna make this a little darker. So let me get out of here, the gradient tool. We're going there. Let's go to the dehaze because there's probably a lot you could do with this. Interesting what it does there. Interesting how it cuts through and look at all the colors it's bringing out. Awesome. That's really cool. Huh. Now it's super dark. Interesting how you can have like more of it. So what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna, before I go too far with that, I wanna save this, play with the color, make it, I like that early morning color. Let's make that a snapshot, we'll do that one. Let's go back to dehaze and let's stick with this for a minute. We got the dehaze, boom. Yes, look how it cut through. You gotta remember, if it's cutting through all the stuff, you have to be careful about sensor dust becoming more prevalent because you're now, you're now basically adding more contrast to the image, which is gonna make those things come out even more. All right. Yes. We have this gentle rolling hills. Now let's just have the tree and the moon. Just want a little bit of that in there. A little bit of a happy bush. Mm, I don't like that as much. It does. It's not as cool as the original shot at all. I'm gonna go back to, let's go back to original and see how, how we can do this. If we wanna crop it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a, a, a different type crop here. Lining the tree up, the moon. We have that, we've got the rolling hills. Okay, come back with the highlights, bring that back. Black levels, clarity, do that. <laughs> you can do the shadows, look how much detail, oh my God, oh my God. Look how much detail you, you can bring back. Not saying that that's a good thing to do all the time, you wanna be very careful with that, 
especially you see how it's less distracting now that it's dark, but it becomes more distracting. This takes away from everything else. So you want to be careful with those shadows. So I'm going to go right there, go like this. Nice. Pull that down. Let's see what the first one looked like. Let's make this a snapshot number two. One, ah, uh, yeah, see, one is the more subtle, less contrasty version, and then number two, we're, we're, we got rid of the haze, we dehaze the heck out of it, and let's also, we already have the strong curve. Look, you could also play with your points right here. You have more highlights, you can slide. So we're playing with the tone curve at this point. Just to see what the different effects do, just as an example to show you what you can do here. Again, I want to update this one. So I'm going to right click on the second one, update with current settings so that we don't go back to the original or back to the one that it was preset at. You just want to make sure you do something like that. All right. And I think I'm going to call it a day. I really do. This is one of those images that you can go 87 different ways. That's why when you download it, I'm going to be curious to see what you do with it. But let's see how Steven is going to process this DNG file. Ah, this, well, just right, right off the bat, I think we're, we can definitely use the new dehaze feature because this is obviously an extremely hazy image. Now, some people might like that. Uh, I, on the other hand, just really want to play with it and see what we have here, see what we can do with it. Um, first, this is the hard part. Do I, do I want to make it, keep it horizontal, or do I want to make it vertical? Um, because I feel like there is kind of a lot of dead space, but at the same time, I kind of like that. Um, First, I think I'm just going to go straight to the dehaze. Let's check that out. Let's see what it does. This is just mind blowing, this new dehaze feature. I usually don't like to go nuts with it, but I'm almost going to 100 with this image because it looks great. Now, notice the more you go, the more kind of ghosting you're going to get around the, uh, the image, more of like a halo effect. Um, so I'm going to bring that back just a hair, probably to, let's give it around, I don't know, 80 or so. Uh, so we're going to go back to our basic module right here. I think white balance is decent. Let's just double check. Uh, actually, maybe I want to make it a little cooler. I'm going to bring it to around 4,700 Kelvin. Uh, Exposure-wise, I think it looks pretty good. Maybe just darken it a tad. Just a, maybe a third stop, if that. Highlights, I want to see what... If I want to go higher or lower, because I kind of still like that haziness there. I think I'm going to keep it around plus 10. Contrast, maybe boomify it just a hair, as Jared would say. And shadows, I don't know if I want to show this in the foreground, these uh, vines or whatever they are. I think I actually want to just bring them down so you don't really see them, because I, I do feel like they're a little distracting. Uh, whites, I'm going to hit Alt Option to see what whites I am adjusting in the image, see if I can make any pure whites stand out. Uh, so I'm going to keep it around plus 13. Same with blacks which looks like these vines are going to be crushed. Uh, clarity, hmm. Do I want to go more like a surreal fairy tale look? That's a little too much. Uh, or do I want to go oh, almost the complete opposite, like zombie apocalypse? I think I'm going to stick with uh, somewhere in the middle, keep it almost neutral. Uh, vibrance, I am going to bump. Do I want to go? Oh, man, this is tough. You know what, I think I'm gonna make a snapshot of this and go back to it later. So let's just call this uh, zombie, zombie color. So we're gonna make a snapshot of that and I'm going to bring that back. Let's see here. I think I'm gonna still pump up the color of hair. I don't wanna go nuts with it. Tone curve, do I wanna go medium point curve? I think I do. Now. Before we go down any farther, I want to go to this crop tool because I really do think I should make this a vertical image because, one, I don't like that it's, this vine isn't really straight. It's more of like a Dutch angle with the vine. Now, the horizon looks pretty straight, but I'm going to hit the X key and crop in a hair to really make this the center. Uh, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Let's keep it around right here. It looks pretty straight for the most part. I could be actually making it worse, but... I think that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I don't like is this area right around here. It looks like there's another tree in the way background covered by this smog or fog or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to bring the healing brush, I think, and take down my size and just kind of wipe this away. See if that 
We'll fix that a little bit. Uh, let's see here. I think that took out a decent amount. If I had more time, I would definitely finesse that a little better. Eh, it's still there, so I'm going to tweak that a little more. Let's see. I don't like that at all. I think I'm going to keep that right there. Again, if I had a little more time, eh, I feel like that just a really crappy job. So I'm going to nix that all together. And we'll just keep it in the image for now. I finesse it a little bit, but for time purposes, I'm going to leave that out. Now, it does look like there's some sensor dust up here. I'm going to take that out while I have this tool available. Um, there might be some more in the image. Like right there is very slight sensor dust. Uh, let's see. My screen's kind of dirty, so I can't really tell if there's any other sensor dust in the image. What's crazy is that this dehaze tool brought out the moon in the image. Um, I think I like that a lot. So let's go back down to the color slider. And I just want to see if I can bring out any of this color in the image. I think I'm going to bring down the orange tag because the tree looks to be a little orange and bring up the luminance of that orange to bring it out a little more. Same with yellow, I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit and bring up the luminance. Uh, green, I think I'm gonna leave that where it is. Hmm, blue, do I go crazy with it or do I pull back or do I keep it around where it is? I think I'm gonna bring it down just a hair. Purple, now this purple in the image, look at that horizon, it just looks like there's kind of a halo with it but just is what it is. I'm going to leave that, I think, in the image. Do I want to take the purple all the way out? Is it distracting, or do I want to leave it in? I don't know. That's kind of a tough call. I think I'm going to leave it in just a little bit. And magenta, I'm going to leave right at zero. Uh, detail, I'm going to do my normal sharpening on this image, which for a landscape, I'm going to bring that detail up. Alt, Option, Key, see what I'm really affecting. To about 40. Same with the masking. Hit the Alt, Option, Key and really just sharpen the tree for the most part because that's the focal point of the image. Keep all the noise reduction where, it, where it's at. Let's see what the lens correction does. Not really much at all in this image, especially because I cropped it vertically. Uh, do I want to add a vignette? I think I want to add a vignette just a little bit. Now I can hit this, I can hit this Alt Option key and really see what midpoint I need to have this set to. I think I'm going to have it bring it down a little bit. Same with the roundness. Make more of a custom vignette. I think I'm going to leave it somewhere around right there. Dehaze, I just want to go over this one more time. Whew, man, this dehaze tool is insane. And I think I'm going to keep it right about there. Let's see. Let me just reset this image and see what was. Wow. That's crazy that it can go from that to this. That's just mind blowing. I still don't like this tree area, but again, if I had some more time to mess with it, I would just remove that completely. But for time purposes, I'll keep that there. And it looks. Looks pretty good. And let me go back to this zombie shot. First, I'll make this one and do just regular color snapshot. And we'll go back to this zombie edit. Yeah, I don't really like that. I think I'm just going to delete that all together. And we'll keep it just regular color. And that is, I think, where I'm going to leave it at for this edit. All right, so we've swapped files. Steven has mine, I have his, so on and so forth. Are we ready to look? I think so. Three, two, one, and go. Hmm, interesting. Mine two are on the left. Yes, you it, have two different variations of I do. Image. Well, I went with more subtle one for once. The first edit I did, I just went, I'm like, I want to, I don't want to hit the dehaze too hard right off the rip. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to keep it ghostly. Mm hmm No, I do like that, because I was going to do an initial like zombie type edit, um, but I ended up last minute taking that out and not doing a separate snapshot. Right. Um, I do like my edit a lot. I actually tried removing the tree a little bit too, that second one in the background. You tried removing the tree, Stephen. Yeah, I Is did. it the giving tree? No, the second tree in the fog though. See in the left, left background? Oh, that. Yeah, I tried to remove that from mine so it was more symmetrical. It didn't work out too well with the quick edit I was doing, so whatever. Gotcha. Well, I, the, the, the reason I didn't want to work with the foreground too much is because I thought it became distracting. So that's why I tried to keep it dark in the foreground. I, I so, tried to do the same, yeah. So it wasn't super distracting. I, the only thing I don't like is those little, like, I don't know, they t 
little pieces of tree or something, little twigs. Do you know what I would have done out? if I was the guy shooting this or girl shooting this photo? What? I probably would have walked up to those things and stomped on them so that they weren't in the way. Yep, yep. You're gonna you're gonna slightly move nature so you can get a better shot. Did you bring your exposure down a little bit too? Or maybe your highlights? On which one? On the second. The one in the middle? Yeah, it just looks a little more muted. Let's see, I went it. ahead and, oh, my exposure is down two stops. Really, you yeah. went down that much? I went down two stops on oh, that exposure. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, there's a lot that you, this, this is one of those files that could have gone so many different ways. Whether it's the color, I didn't even I didn't even go into black and white, really. I see you caught that sensor dust too at the top. I did, I found the one piece of dust. Yeah. There was a, a couple, but yeah, I think I What just... about that other, that one that looks like it has a, a, a face smiling at you? Oh, that's the moon. I'm just kidding. No, that's, that's just something that's there. So, so what do you think? Uh, I think I prefer mine on this one, but I like yours as well. They're just different. I, I like the vertical crop again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I personally like the vertical. If I did, I would, I think I, think I tried to crop it vertically, but then the sticks that got in the way took yeah. it away from me. Yeah. So this is that thing, guys. Do you like mine? Do you like Steven's? Or are you gonna like yours even better? That's why this file is pretty awesome because you can go so many different ways. You can change the color, you can change the composition, change yep. the crop. The one thing you can't do is change those stinking things, that, those twigs that are sticking in the way. But what you can do right now is go to fronosphoto.com LR 3030, download this DNG file as well as all of the other files that we have available for you. And if you don't have Lightroom yet, don't worry, you can download a free trial of Lightroom so that you can play with all of these files and more. Steven, nice job. You too. All right, that's it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.